Hey, this is Dion. And today I'm going to be interviewing my friend and teacher, Gilad Chapman, who is a massage teacher. And I'll let you talk, I'll let him talk to you about more to describe all the wonderful things he does because I don't even know. So this is, uh, my friends are smart, and this is Dion. All right, so hey, Gilad. Hi, Dion. <laughs> Hi, nice to see you. Likewise, indeed. Thanks. It's been a while. It's been a while, it has. I did see you a little bit, though, during quarantine when you were doing some online self-massage techniques. Right, I should do a few more of those. I loved those. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So what do you want to talk about? I have a lot to talk. Give okay. me a, where would you like me to start? All right, that's a good question. So um, I'm doing this, this interviewing of all the people who have made such an impression on, on me in my life. And I'm calling it My Friends Are Smart. And um, let's just start at the beginning when I met you and you were talking about the importance of touch and massage and connection. So if you want, can just maybe even talk to us about that, just... Um... Well, we can make it even relevant because right now we're in a extremely touch deprived time for so many people. And not only uh, people are forbidden from being touched, uh, and, and there's also a limitation on people getting uh, a massage session, which is such uh, a, an amazing opportunity for people to experience their body, get nourished while uh, someone's giving them the attention that they need. And before you go, so, um, before you go yes. into that, I just want to um, talk about the people, like I would want a massage, but I'm a little bit nervous just about spreading the virus. So yes, we need the massage, and also I'm scared to get one. I hear you. And uh, if, if we talk specifically about that, uh, my impression, and again, uh, it's really important to, to, that, to clarify that everything I say on this is my understanding and uh, it's, I mean, the main thing is we don't have enough information as a collective as to what we're actually facing. So we can see a few trends with things that are happening. And we can see that when people are careful, when people um, keep the proper hygiene, then they're less likely to uh, infect one another. Okay. And when they're not, then there's higher uh, probability that they will infect one another. Okay. And that means that in the clinical sense, we as massage therapists, we need to keep a higher level of hygiene in general. And then this times even more working with, whether we work with gloves, using masks and so on to create the safety that both sides need. Okay. And we could find out at some point that all these measurements were not really effective anyway. Yeah, I, this is what we know. From that. I know. I agree. I just um, think about how everybody in the airport has to take their shoes off when they're going through security. And I'm like, it doesn't make sense. Like maybe there's something going through that's bad, but it seems like there might be a different way to be able to get to it without having everybody take their shoes off. And it kind of feels the same. It's like, yeah, there might be something bad out there, but we are, you know, we are humans and we are people and we need touch and we need um, togetherness and we need each other. So 
Yes. Now yeah. we're now we're at the point of talking about the healing touch of massage. Well, before we even get to massage, because massage is a specific kind of touch, we need to go into the basics. And the basics that is that all mammals require touch regularly. It's part of the feeding that our bodies need to, uh, as youngsters, to develop, but as adults, to maintain a healthy level of well-being. And when we don't get touch, it's a little bit like not eating. We get hungry. And different people will respond in a different way to this hunger. Some people might shut down from the world. Some people might start to behave in, uh, I'll call it mildly odd ways, um, or that are not socially acceptable because of this need for touch. And in massage therapy, we are doing two things. A lot of the time people come because they hurt, because they have this or that discomfort in their body. But along this process, we're nourishing this basic uh, need for touch. And the touch, generally speaking, is divided into two categories. The superficial touch, which is called, uh, we can call it tactile, and the deeper kind of touch, which is the proprioceptive. The tactile is everything that's very light and rubbing and stimulates all the nerve endings in the skin. And the deeper touch, uh, the proprioception, is the feelings of one's body is uh, stimulating the proprioceptors in the muscles, in the, uh, the tendons, the ligaments, the joints that in, are giving us that feeling of where our bodies are and where are the different parts of the body and allows the brain to kind of like, oh, okay, here's a palm, here's a foot and so on. And it's actually helping the, uh, the body image of the brain to be clearer and more focused. Nice. So it's all encompassing. And they're also emotional. Um, some people might even take it into spiritual aspects of, of the touch. But even if we keep it on a very physical level, uh, it's highly nourishing and okay. important. A friend of mine told me recently, since she's been quarantining very seriously, like, like I have and like a lot of people I know, that when she's finally now starting to see people and a friend of hers gave her a hug, she said that she started to cry. She hadn't realized how much she missed even just the human touch at all. She ha she's alone and she has her dog. So she's very thankful for having little Bindi. Cute so little important. Yeah. 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 At, at these times, uh, having a pet or, you know, children, spouse, or, I mean, you know, any partner is really beneficial. And if used in a, in a positive way, can create a lot of bonding and healing for both sides. And there's so many people out there that do not have any kind of a partner or uh, the possibility to be in touch with someone. And this is overwhelming on so many levels. And I'm not sure that the damages that are caused by the lack of touch are not greater than what uh, the virus could do. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that there's a lot of depression and maybe even in the future, even higher rates of suicide and just unwellness that's happening in people's minds. And, you know, it's just a confusing time. So also violence. That's the other side of it. There's also an increase in, of violence. Yeah. Uh, there's more reason for that as well, not just the lack of touch. Uh, but that's a totally different type of topic. Well, we can talk about anything. I mean, I wanted to talk a little bit more about massage. And what I'm seeing are two maybe solutions for 
someone who is needing touch and not getting it at this time would be to actually having a massage or doing self massage. So would you want to talk mm -hmm. about either one of those? Yes. Uh, self massage is great. The greatest disadvantage of it is that our brain knows when we are touching ourselves and it addresses it in a different way than uh, when the stimulation, so the touch, is coming from the outside. Mm. And we need that input from the outside. Uh, it's extremely important and it's uh, and still, when someone cannot do, self-massage is amazing, is awesome. It's uh, very uh, much reminding the brain of, of, oh, there's a body here, and that feels so good. And yeah. we can allow ourselves to adjust this touch to be the right thing for ourselves. Nice. And the other... The other aspect is to find someone you can uh, create that level of trust that you can say, okay, yes, I can open up to get a, a touch, an educated type of touch that uh, is so healing and nourishing. Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit more about the journey also? So I believe that that's... Um kind of a combination of physical touch and emotional, um, I don't know. Yes and no, or no and yes. Um, the journey is an interactive uh, type of uh, uh, guided imagery that works with whatever comes up for the person to allow whether uh, emotional or physical healing. Uh, the journey, the general journey practitioner will not touch you. Oh. It's an untouch uh, session. Um, uh, I can do it via uh, Skype or Zoom or whatever, you know, any type of media if uh, we cannot meet. So that's something that can be done uh, in, in long distance, preferably with a camera because the practitioner is opening up with the person who's going through the process, which uh, a video image allows a better connection, but it also works with, uh, we have experience with uh, even phone sessions that can work. Uh, even though, you know, the best thing would be to, to meet in person. There's something so special about two people in the same space that's very healing. Um, now, since I'm a massage therapist on one hand, and uh, I've done emotional body work uh, pretty much from the beginning of, uh, of being a therapist, a massage therapist, um, along with the skills of a journey practitioner, I often combine the two. So someone can get just a journey session, just a massage therapy, uh, I, off, I usually do more raw thing, structural integration type of body work on the other hand, or a combined uh, one. Cool. And yes, it's amazing. It's amazing because the touch is so supporting of the inner work and it accelerates the process, makes it more focused and to the point because we have uh, the tendency to store stuck memories, emotions, cellular memories, as they're, they're being called. And the touch allows that memory to open up and get through the system in a much quicker way. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Uh, during a journey session, do people cry? Is that a big part of it? Just kind of like having like a, a release? Um, yes and no. I mean, some sessions, uh, I had a session today with someone who who opened up and, and was crying, sobbing. And there are other sessions where someone just goes in and experiences with whatever's in there without any external uh, expression. Ah, uh, you just froze on me. 
Gilad. I lost him. Come back, Gilad. See if I can get him to come back. We had a little uh, internet glitch here. <laughs> but thank goodness for technology, huh? I mean, I- I love it. <laughs> it's really what's getting me through, what's be able, like, being able to connect, I mean, with people like you and everyone. It's, it's really, um, and being able to be creative through it, making videos and just photographing things. And I've just really, I use it a lot and then I get really mad at it when it doesn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> when I have problems, I'm like, ah! I totally hear you. <laughs> it's so frustrating when, when things happen, but uh, sometimes it is what it is. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm totally with you. You know, uh, I've, I've done recently a lot of online teaching. Um, I'm planning on doing some continuing education online. Uh, oh, tell me, because I'd like to, I need some CEUs. Um, I have a few things coming up. Uh, I'm, I'm working on an ethic class. That's one thing. There's a, um, a class, an intro to structural integration and myofascial body work that I want to do. Nice. And uh, uh, there's a third one. These are the, the, the beginner ones we're going to do uh, um, about making your massage the best. Uh, it's tips that have been gathered through history and being put into what are the different aspects that the massage therapist needs to pay attention. Because sometimes, you know, we graduate from school and then life takes its course and we kind of forget a lot of the little things that we've been told in school that are actually very important that can make the massage such a more uh, profound experience for the client on one hand, but also can save the therapist's body. And one of the, the mission, the long-term missions I have in the massage therapy field is seeing therapists that last, that can be doing massage for years and years and years. Oh. And I'm only doing massage for 30 years. So, um, and uh, you know some of our colleagues, I think uh, you talked to Sandy and, and um, Iris Berman, who's doing it more than 40 years. So there's something to look forward to. And um, uh, it's, it's a possibility. You don't have to die killing your body doing massage. It's, it's not necess a necessity. Yeah. Um, and, you know, when I first heard the statistics that the length of the massage therapist's career is three to five years, I thought the person was bluffing. I mean, the, 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 the information is, is not real. Like, seriously? Well, yeah. I and People go yeah. into, they go into that, um, let's say, work to help people and to heal. And then they just overwork themselves. And it's like they hurt themselves within the first three to five years. And then they have to give up. But it's almost like this ingrained thing that we have that we need to like push and push and like you know just like work really hard and like we hurt ourselves it's like um it it just seems like it's it's the the track that we're on right that um right. we overdo things and it's not in a conscious way and then we hurt it's a combination of a few things one of them is working uh, forcefully rather than working smart and working smart means you need to use your body in a way that it might have a little bit of an effort into it, but it's not something that's creating tension on the different joints of your body, especially not in the hands. Yeah. Um, and the second aspect is, is overworking. And generally speaking, in my understanding, especially in places like spas, 
they book people back to back because they need to make their money. But in the long run, it's harmful for the therapist. They're overworking. And then when they're overworking, the client gets less of a, a good massage uh, on one hand and the therapist gets burned out and the spa needs new recruits. Wow. Um, I, I might be old school here, but I believe in long-term relationships and something that can last and that we don't need to uh, have people come in and out uh, of a business to make it run. And, uh, and a lot of what we see, not just in massage, I mean, we have so many things that are built to just last for one, two years, and then, okay, we, we replace them with a new thing. Rather right. than make something that can uh, be smarter and last for a longer period of time. Yeah, I can, uh, I can hear you talking about, I mean, I can relate that to a pair of shoes, a cell phone or computer, a relationship, like a boyfriend or girlfriend, where people, they just go through things and things that are made to last are, there's just something more like soulful about it, you know, and it becomes absolutely. like a deeper connection with something. I mean, my boyfriend, Rob has this tractor. I think it was his grandfather's tractor that they drove down all the way from New Hampshire to Naples, Florida. And this thing, it breaks all the time and he fixes it. He'll go and he'll get a little piece from the hardware store and he'll, you know, put it in there and then it'll work again and then it breaks, but he has a relationship with it and he doesn't want a new one. You know, he loves that one. It's yeah. a good machine. And yeah, I like what you're saying about that. <laughs> it's a different mindset. It's thinking, uh, and, and again, I think that goes into global thinking of sustainability rather than how do I make a quick buck for today and the heck with tomorrow. Uh, it, it means we need to think of how do we pretty much recycle everything? How do we eat consciously and so that we sustain this body in, in the best way possible? Uh, you know, everybody knows pretty much, or most people know that